Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and today's episode is going to be another great sort of history sort of episode. Uh, we're going to talk about song translations, okay? So, you know, again, you know, the, the, in the era of, uh, you know, trying to learn and trying to figure out what, uh, you know, these translations of animation is, where we just, just didn't have any, um, you know, we need to obviously work in the process of getting things translated, all right? So that's what we're going to talk about in this particular episode. So before I begin, I want to remind everyone to go down below, click like, click subscribe. Again, you know, you, know, you can really help me out by, uh, you know, if you like this video, go down below and click like and it helps uh, YouTube, uh, you know, work on its algorithm. Again, maybe leave a comment and, uh, you know, if you have a, a personal experience with, uh, you know, songs and that kind of stuff and trying to, you know, interpret songs and that kind of stuff, by all means, you know, put a comment down there. That'd be great. Um, I also have a, uh, a Patreon and a PayPal for the subscribers and supporters of for the uh, channel. So again, uh, we have a whole uh, section of episodes and that kind of stuff uh, now available for uh, the subscribers. I, I've just released the, the you know the next batch of five, so we're up to episode 15 for that. So definitely, uh, again, there's a whole bunch of content that, that I'm just not able to put on YouTube. And there's some stuff, now we get into some personal stuff in there that I definitely can't put on, on YouTube. So that you know, you know that's uh, we'll give you more. Um, in-depth sort of uh, 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 you know information experience on the uh, on the Patreon, so definitely you know do check that out. Uh, the listing of both my episodes that I have for the uh, history of fan anime, and of course the bonus episodes are actually in, uh, you know linked below. So go down, you can below, you can click and see uh, what uh, topics and stuff are, are available. Okay, I'm still updating the uh, the main listing right now, and I'm finding out that I've actually. Uh, accidentally misnumbered the episode, so I'm going to uh, make the correction uh, in the next little bit. So again, if you see the numbers fluctuate a little bit, um, you'll, you'll know why. Okay, so I'll, the correction will come from probably the next couple of episodes, okay? So get into that. All right, so in today's episode, we're going to talk about song translation. So let's go back a little bit in time. Um, basically, in the early days, we didn't really get uh, videos and that kind of stuff. There was no translation at all, right? So straight Japanese, a lot of stuff is just recorded straight off of the TV in Japan. So it has got commercials in it, and it's got, you know, opening and ending theme songs and all that stuff, and, and, and all the announcers talking over it, and, and things like, um, you know, this this show is sponsored by, and it gives a list of different sponsors, and, you know, uh, things like, uh, you know, eye catches and things like that. You know, you know we'll be back after these episodes. You know, after these important messages from our sponsors and that kind of thing, and those kind of words and that kind of stuff, all in the video, right? But one of the things that really caught me was, of course, you know, of course, is the music aspect. Like here, I am you know, listening and hearing all these sort of new sort of songs and that kind of stuff, and I'm going, I wonder what some of them are about. Like you know, like, uh, you know, they, they mix English words in them, so so it really you know gives you some sort of curiosity exactly what they're singing about. So as I you know, bought these, you know, Japanese magazines and that kind of stuff to try to find out what uh, is, you know, you know, what, obviously what news and that kind of stuff is, I came across the, this sort of book. Okay, um, this book uh, comes in the Animedia magazine. It's called the, uh, you know, it's called in this case is the Song V. Okay, and this one came out in 1994 uh, for the year 1994. Uh, it's, it's out of uh, an anime, um, an, an anime V magazine. Okay. Uh, indeed, it is uh, September's issue of '94, um, and basically, if you go inside, it basically has a whole bunch of different, various, different OVAs and that kind of stuff, and it has a bunch of sheet music, okay, along with the different um, lyrics uh, for the particular songs, right? So, you know, some songs are just straight, uh, you know, you know, song lyrics and that kind of stuff, uh, straight out uh, for particular animes and that kind of stuff. And then, of course, uh, some other ones, uh, you know, here, you know, are you know full with uh, you know sheet music and that kind of stuff and whatnot uh, with the lyrics and that kind of stuff for them. Okay, and of course, this one covers a whole bunch of different, various different animes. Uh, there's Tenshi Muyo, you know, Dirty Pair Flash, and uh, you know, You're Under Arrest, uh, Ranma. You know, okay. Um, you know, I see. Uh, I think uh, I see Hummingbird, things like that are all in here. Uh, in this particular issue, okay, because that's the stuff that comes out in '94. So I thought, okay, well, this is really you know good and that kind of stuff. Um, but I, you know, so if I wanted to, I, I could you know try to find a way to play it, or um, you know try to find someone who knew Japanese to 
to do the translations for it. Now, of course, my translator at the time, Daisuke, wasn't really interested in doing song translations because, you know, you got to think song translations, there's obviously, you know, a literal translation. So you just take the words the, uh, as they're written and just, just write them down. Um, and then there's, of course, the interpretive, which is, you know, okay, so you got these words, but, you know, they could mean something. They could be some sort of, um, you know, a metaphor or a simile or, uh, you know, could be, you know, kind of a juxtaposition. Juxtap his position, um, an analogy of some sort, maybe you know, maybe it's have some sort of reference to something else uh, that's in the video or for, or, or for the anime, maybe uh, you know, you really don't know, and and um, you know, and there's a lot of discussion about that. So I'm gonna basically go through some examples of that kind of thing. So basically, um, in the early days, uh, you know, when I was doing a lot of letter writing. Um, I came across uh, a person that lived really actually quite quite, quite close. Uh, you know, her name's uh, Anna Exter, and um, she was uh, g g f g her information was given to me from the CFO Victoria, which is over in Vancouver Island, and um, she was a member that was, that, that came uh, from um, you know relatively close. It's a, a city called uh, or a little town called Gibson, which is if you if you're you know kind of a localite, um, you know. Uh, that's where the the, the TV show the, the the Beachcombers were actually filmed in. Anyway, so I sent her a letter, and you know, she, you know, she seemed to be you know, you know somewhat knowledgeable, learning Japanese on her own type of thing. Um, and uh, you know, so and, uh, we had this conversation about music and that kind of stuff. We traded videos and and, uh, and some audio cassettes and that kind of stuff. And then I asked her, you know, if she was able to do some song translations. So I took some photocopies of. Various different songs and that kind of stuff, and uh, you know, for example, just like, you know, pick a page out of this one here, and I photocopied it out, and then basically sent it to her and said, "Hey, do you think you can maybe you know figure out how to you know translate this song or whatever, and uh, and uh, you know figure it out, right?" And then of course she would send back a a printed out version uh, of the actual song translation back, right? Uh, in the way that she has, and so I thought, okay, this is really good. And, and so I got a couple of these things I, I, I can go over in slight more detail, and I'll give you a closer look up at those, and I'll tell you some other stories about uh, uh, the song translations. Okay, so the first one we uh, look at is the opening and ending theme songs for Sonic Soldier Borgman. Don't look back is the opening theme song, and then Forever is the uh, ending theme song. So I uh, you know, circled those. Uh, on this thing, this one has the sheet music and everything. So I made a photocopy of this page and I sent it to her. And uh, then it up comes uh, back of this uh, letter with uh, this uh, translation typed on it. And then you can even see on the translation for forever, the uh, per, uh, per, uh, you know, she actually made a little uh, footnote at the very bottom here that says, "This line is so cool and poetic in Japanese." You know, just just me indicating that you know th it was a really uh, you know, well written line. Uh, in, the, in the in the text there, so that's kind of neat there. Okay, the next one is uh, the uh, for the anime uh, Heaven Wars Shirato, and uh, yeah, again, I really like this one because you know, it, you know it's another one of those kind of uh, you know Saint Seiya uh, like type shows, except uh, you know instead of being um, you know uh, singing gods and that kind of stuff, it's more the uh, you know the the Vishnu and the you know and the Buddha and all that kind of stuff, right? Anyway, um, so this is the, uh, the, the translation for the, uh, the song, for the ending theme song. And so I thought, okay, well, uh, sure, I'll, I'll, you know, so I like Shroto, I'll, I'll, I'll take this photocopy and send it. And then uh, back comes this uh, typewritten letter on this one. And, uh, yeah, this is really good because, uh, you know, I, I really like the music for Shroto, so, that, you know, this now gives me some context and that kind of stuff uh, uh, for, the sh for the series. Okay, so the next one is for an anime uh, compiler. Um, that's the uh, Kia Smiya's uh, 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 manga, and um, so one of the favorite songs, uh, favorite songs that I actually like is not actually the opening of these songs, but it's actually the one called uh, it's the image song. It's called uh, Kitchen Discotheque, okay. And so the this particular uh, anime V magazine uh, for songs I actually had it, so I uh, made a full copy of that particular uh, thing and you know marked it out there, sent it to him, and uh, yeah, it comes back. She's got a translation and all this stuff, all this one, and you know it, it's kind of really neat because it's, it's just so funny how the uh, uh, the song was was put together. Here. And this, uh, this is you know, you know in this series of you know, compiler, there's there's some pretty strange stuff, and I'll show you in the in the in the, in the next one here, um, what, you know, which what I mean by it being strange. Okay, so on the 
next page, um, there's obviously like there's a whole bunch of more songs, uh, image songs, that kind of stuff uh, from Compiler and and like the various albums that they made, right? They because they made um, one for each sort of the characters, and you know, so obviously if you think of the uh, progression of the characters, it's Compiler, uh, Assembler, uh, Interpreter, then they went to Plasma. Um, so you know, and uh, so yeah, you know, so I said this one, and what was really funny is, is that the image song at the very bottom, Compiler, right? Um, uh, when I said that one to them, and the the, the, the response, uh, you know, came back from Anna, and she goes, you know, "This is <laughs> this is song is really messed up. Like like the, the song translation is just really really bizarre." And so she, you know, the comment was written right at the very top there, and it's really kind of funny. Um, but yeah, it's just 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 the indication that that sometimes you know these song translations are not like straightforward. I mean, they're really really, you know. Um, abstract and it requires uh, you know the, the the person to you know not only try to literally translate it but then try to make sense of what the translate like like what the words are like like what what is the person actually trying to say with these particular words? I'll give an example of something that, that, that if we that a little bit later on uh, or maybe make another episode you know all about you know it's just some of these weirdy. All right, so the next page on this one was um. Uh, off of the, oh, I think it was off the lasers for uh, Juseng Tai songs, which is the um, uh, music uh, laser disc for uh, Dan Cougar. So it's basically the uh, perennial let's just take the cast members of the show and put them into a band, and then you know there's a bunch of various different songs. You know, they, I mean, they did this for Zillion, they did this for Borg Man. You know, it's a you know commonly thing. You said, you know, I guess you can use, say they did this thing for like like Ranma and, and uh, Amagadis, for example. Uh, they all have you know singing versions. Anyway, so I sent this uh, sheet of uh, you know musical translations in, and I got back uh, various uh, translations of the uh, you know uh, different songs. Again, like, yeah, I really like a lot of these different songs. Uh, I know far away, of course, is the opening theme song for Dan Cougar. Um, I remember Time and the Period. It's a very uh, you know a really nice catchy beady type of song, which they you know they did the Shinobu and um, and uh, Sarah thing together with that one. So I always thought that was really nice. And so yes, yeah, it's, it's you know and again this is one of my favorite anime. So I'm really happy that Anna um, you know went and did this. And I I know later on I remember reading an interview where she was talking about that and you know and uh, I got her to do a uh, Dan Cougar um, as a, as a, as a translation project and. Uh, so I'll probably make another episode of that, uh, talking about uh, you know when we did the translation for that particular show. Okay, so the next one is a, a series for uh, Heaven War Shirato. Uh, we did the fan subs for these ones uh, a while ago. You can definitely tell this one's a, a hard one because um, when I sent the translation for the opening theme song for it, right, obviously then you know, the person that we sent back said, uh, you know, he had a problem translating one of the lines, and I just remembered. Yeah, this is really awkward because if you've never seen the anime, when you get thrown a line like, you know, Onshura Sawaka, <laughs> right? Like trying to get that to translate. That's like obviously, it's not like a real word. It's like you know, it's, it's like saying you know, try to translate, you know. Uh, hami hami ha, or uh, you know, uh, abracadabra, or something, right? Without actually knowing this context, it's really, really difficult. So, um, <laughs> so it's really funny that you know, so they actually you know, wrote that saying, "Hey, this is actually written in kind of kind of this way." I have no idea how to translate this, right? And of course, you know, because you, you, you can't, right? It's just it's, that, that that was just how Shirato says it, right? And so it's really funny that you know that, that, that that's written in that way. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's a that's a good sort of reference for um, how if in this in this day and age, right, you just can't send like an MP3 file or or, or like a you know um, the uh, you know any reference to what that's supposed to sound like, what that's supposed to be, right? You actually have to physically send a tape, uh, like an audio cassette recording, or you know like a videotape of the of the show Shroders of the guys that they so he, he can see. Oh, I get it. It's it's Shirato's move sound, and so uh, you know that's why uh, you end up with like funny things like that in the translations. Now the song "Shining Soul" uh, that is the actual first opening theme, first season opening theme song for Shirato, and uh, probably one I like probably the best. Um, so you know, that, again, that's the one that was more important to me for it to get translated, and, and uh, so this is you know it looks like a pretty simple song. So you know, again. Uh, this is the translation they got from that one.
All right, so the next page is obviously a page from, I think it might be from the Pat Labor Clips um, uh, Laserdisc. And uh, so again, this is basically a bunch of music videos for uh, Pat Labor, Mobile Police Pat Labor. And uh, here's a uh, various number of songs which I've kind of just, you know, uh, circled. And uh, when it went to the translation, um, the, the back, uh, some of them were pretty interesting. And, and one example I wanted to point out was this one here, um, where the person was, you know, like obviously, you know, had to interpret what the particular you know, uh, words and that kind of stuff were. So again, you can look up the words and you can say, well, it means this, if you just look it up in the dictionary sort of thing. But then, if, you know, by saying it in this way, you know, it implies, you know, in this case, it implies a more sexual um, sort of uh, meaning, right? So then that way, um, you know, you would choose it to translate it a slightly more, you know, different way, for example, um, you know, leaning that you know, towards that way. And that's sort of one of the examples of the interpretive, right? And, um, I um, mean, you know, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll give you another example of, of, of one that we ran into, uh, you know, doing this kind of thing. So again, doing songs is a lot more difficult and a lot more um, interpretive, right? So, uh, you know, you have to see how it reflects on you and how you, you know, view it and, uh, and, and what you think the meaning actually is. And that brings me to the, the main point of this episode was basically... You know, when we did the translation from uh, Maze and Akaku, you know, and, you know, a lot of people at the time just, just absolutely, you know, were netted the fact that, you know, we actually managed to do all 96 episodes of the, of the series, which is a feat in itself, right? And then you get people that complain about it all the time. So I got this article that, that, that someone wrote down, wrote down um, and he complains that, yeah, you know, back when the only people translating non-science fiction actually was the Vancouver's own Prince of Darkness, that's you know, himself, great, uh, another great title. Um, anyway, uh, of Arctic Animation, Maison Kaku was the most anticipated part of any shipment of tapes from Quest Labs in, in uh, State Chicago. Said, cause I've sent those tapes everywhere, um, and, uh, you know, and um, I'll probably get into, you know, episodes where I, you know, um, you know uh, get into some of the letters I've gotten. And, um, and he goes back and says, uh, I think I bought a tape back, uh, to her back from one of the monthly marathon uh, copying sessions from the Lawrenceville Library basement, uh, uh, an old-time fan club in Pittsburgh, anime Kakin, the most everyone, uh, the, P uh, the P P S S F S loved it. Uh, said, although it did have a science fiction or fantasy elements like uh, the Kimigoro and Drode. Anyway, he writes, the translations of the Arctic animation uh, were fa famously haphazard and erratic. Cried Rusted Clock became uh, PSSFFF's shorthand for Maison Akaku due to its typically wacky translation of the first opening theme song of the show. Um, of course, you know, never actually mentioned that the rest of the series was alright, but you know, it's just, you know, the, you know, that was the, you know, the, 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 the song translation that they're, they're, that everyone was bitching about. Um, you know, of course, they, you know, they they go on to say that they you know they're they're going to try to make a project to you know translate them, and they you know probably didn't get very far because then, you know I'm, you know I'm thinking it took us the better course of of like you know oh, probably a year and a half, two years to do all ninety six episodes, right? So that's a lot of dedication since you know you know since you know you just you you know you're just pounding at the episode. I know I know me I know Orange Road. You know, once I got started and, and, and you know used that time period, I, I used basically all of like November and December and most of December, uh, you know, to literally burn out speed, to to, to you know to to, re to do all those episodes and and you know so that was you know quite intense and I was you know really, really close to being burned out and so you expect to do ninety six episodes like like you know like you know double with Warren Drode, um, you know. <laughs> You know, it, it, you know, to, to, to do it at burnout speed it would still be like, you know, <clears throat> four months. So a year would probably be, um, you know, a, a feat in itself. And obviously, you know, I guess these guys didn't get very far of it because, you know, obviously it's just, it's a really tough thing. Anyway, so back to the thing. Here we are. We have, you know, the, you know these people complaining about, oh, you know, you know, cried a rusted clock. I mean, th th literally, if we look at the line in the, in the thing. So you see the line is Sabata toke, toke no to naya kedo, which, okay, so I mean, Sabata is obviously the ad, 
adjective, right? Rust, rusted, rusty, rusting, okay, whatever. Um, toki, clock, okay, is what it actually, you know, is the translation to that. So the, obviously the adjective, the noun would be the, the clock, right? Implying it's a rusty clock, rusting clock. Um, that type of thing. Uh, naita is the verb to cry. So crying, cried, uh, you know, to cry, right? And kado is but, so they chose to put but with the next word. So they translate it as, I wept together with my rusted watch. Now, of course, you know, they obviously interpreted, they've added the word together. Uh, you know, they interpreted it as a watch rather than a clock. You know, now is the word then saying that, okay, you cried so much that the, you know, or you are crying as much as if the watch was crying and, the, and it rusted the, the the watch. Or, you know, there's, there, obviously, you know, there is the reference in Maison Akaku that there, the clock that's on the Maison is all, it wasn't working because it's so old. So we're referring to that as a rusted clock, okay, that doesn't work. So again, you know, you cried so much that, the, you know, it is, it is the same effect as the rain that basically wore the clock so it now no longer works. That's on the Maison. Okay. That's another interpretation. You know, the, all these sort of things kind of come, you know, come in. How far do you want to spend trying to analyze that line to, you know, to put that? Again, these, these people just sort of feel, well, geez, I, I know better because, you know, uh, you know, my command of English is so much better. I, I you know, I, I, I don't know why you would, um, you know, translate it as that. And so, you know, instead of trying to translate the literal English or you know, the word words, which essentially which is what you got, you know, rusty, rusted, clock, and to cry. So, you know, the translation ended up on the screen as cry a rusted clock. That's it. You figure out what the rest of it means, you know. Uh, you know, it's just not important, especially in this in, in the context of this is a song translation. We're not translating the episodes like the the actual dialogue in the episodes. Um, you know, this is a song translation, so live with it, figure it out. You know, don't be such a baby about it, right? Jeez, and this is exactly what happens. You know, people just just calm. You know, you know, um, you know, uh, take you know the fact that you know th this is something that that, that is so. Um, you know, minor, but they have to make it a major thing of it because they want it to be literally perfect, or you know, they, 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 it's so far that they needed to, to you know to, to just do the research on this. And again, you know, um, this translation can obviously be open to a lot of different interpretations, especially um, uh, you know, when you get to this, because you know, who knows? Maybe the actual you know, idea behind Toki is not. It, the physical item like clock or watch, maybe it's actually time, right? It's a reference to time. Anyway, um, which would actually might, 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 might make it poetic, right? Crying for uh, such a long time, as it were, that uh, even time, uh, you know, gets dilapidated. Um, but anyway, so that, you know, this is just sort of one of those things that, you know, we got grief for just because, you know, we think that, uh, you know, we know better for the song, right? So, anyway, I just uh, thought that was kind of a, an interesting point. Okay, so you hope uh, that gives you a, a, a broader idea of what we had to go through in order to get things like song translations done and, and whatnot. So next time you, you know, say, you know, watch an opening theme song or an opening credits, you can now appreciate a lot more um, just how difficult it is to do even just the simple things like, like a song translation. Uh, it's not quite the same as just, you know, dialogue uh, translation because obviously you, you there's, there's context there's 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 things that you would you you could say that would you can get away with uh, as opposed to a song where it's much shorter you know the, the the frame of reference is a lot tighter um and of course then you also worry about does it rhyme does it you know would you say it in that sort of way that makes it sort of um you know literal if you want to say if you want to uh, make it you know flow with the song, or you know using too long of words, too many you know raw number of syllables. I don't know whatever uh, excuse you want to make it so that you know it, it fits within the song, or the beat, for example. Uh, you'll come up with different translations, and so that's sort of one of the things that we kind of always had problems running into, and and I guess you know, you know as 
mentioned earlier, some people just have an issue with that, and and you know, and you know, they think that they know better. And uh, you know, in our position that we had, especially at this time, we have no idea whether that if that was the intent or uh, you know the the the, the picture that that, that uh, the song was trying to portray uh, when it was being sung. All right, so. Hope you enjoy that. And again, we'll get into more episodes where I go over some old uh, uh, letters and things that they're related to. Okay? So, until next time, I will see you again.